Can you see this? Do you guys know what this means? It means we are officially residents of Mexico. Well, temporary residents. This has been three years in the making. Ever since our first trip to Mexico in 2020, we fell in love with the country and have been excited to return to explore more. We know a lot of you have pursued travel in Mexico because of our videos, which is amazing. So we wanted to share more about our experience in getting residency so that if you're interested in doing the same, you aren't as confused as we were and hopefully it doesn't take you the three tries it took us. In our prior visits, we traveled Mexico on a very generous tourist permit, which gives you up to 180 days or six months to travel the country freely. This is a great option if you just wanna explore for short stints. But after traveling here now for our third time, our goals of being in Mexico have changed. Rather than just see the sights as a tourist, we eventually want to move here, at least part-time. We're not exactly sure where this will happen in Mexico or when, but we really like the idea of getting to live here and get to know the country more intimately. Temporary residency does not mean we are giving up our citizenship in the United States or that we are becoming Mexican citizens. What it's really allowing us to do is be able to stay in Mexico beyond the 180 day tourist permit without having to leave. We no longer have to get an FMM or a tourist permit when crossing the border. We can also open a Mexican bank account, get a Mexican driver's license, or register vehicle here in Mexico. There are a few ways to qualify for residency in Mexico. We chose the path of economic solvency, which means that we can prove we make enough money to live in Mexico temporarily. There's two ways of proving economic solvency. You can either have 12 months bank statements showing you have a certain amount of money in a savings account or a 401k or a Roth IRA, or you can prove that you have at least six months of consistent pay stubs from a job you can work remotely. We're not sharing the exact amounts required for your savings or for your monthly income because it is tied to Mexico's minimum wage, which changes periodically. Since these YouTube videos live here forever, when you're watching it, it could be a very different amount from what is currently required. When we applied in the summer of 2022, the consulate required us to prove we made at least 300 days of Mexico's minimum wage after taxes, which at the time came out to be about $2,800 per month. Because the required amount is tied to the peso, how much money you need in your bank account will fluctuate daily based on currency exchange. We also found that the required amount can change depending on the consulate you're applying with. For example, the Austin consulate uses the 300 day rule for six months of income, or it requires at least 5,000 days of Mexico's minimum wage over a 12 month period for a savings account. But the Orlando consulate just has a set amount that is required for your savings and for your income per month, no matter what. And it doesn't match the 300 or the 5,000 day rule. So for that reason, we urge you to go to the Mexican consulate in your local area and see what their requirements are at the time you're planning to apply for residency. Applying for Mexican residency starts in your home country. You have to have an appointment to apply for temporary residency at the consulate in your home country, and these appointments book out super, super early. It's a good idea to find out what your local consulate does, whether it's by email or phone, or if they want you to go online and create a profile, where you can then choose the appointment date based on the next availability. If you do have to go online to make your appointment, just make sure you're making it for the visas department. We accidentally chose a different department for our second attempt at residency in Orlando and they wouldn't see us. Don't be like us. Our first attempt at getting temporary residency was at the Austin Consulate in Texas. We made the right appointment, but they didn't like how we paid ourselves. Because we are self-employed, we were taking owner draws from our company, and they like to see physical paychecks to prove that you make a set amount of money each month. You're going to have a huge stack of papers with you when you go to your appointment. They want to have a completed application for temporary residence. They also ask for a fresh passport photo, copies of our existing passports from our home country, as well as all the bank statements and paychecks proving our income over that period. Rather than us both having to prove economic solvency, making $2,800 a month each, it was a much cheaper and easier route to have Dennis be a dependent of me. If you have a partner or child that you'd like to qualify as dependent, make sure to bring in a document that shows your proof of relationship. That could be a birth certificate or your original marriage license. The consulate sent us a huge list of all the things to bring to the appointment, but this was not on it. So 
make sure to bring a marriage certificate for your partner or birth certificate for your children. We made a copy of everything and then went through a brief interview. They asked us why we were interested in getting temporary residency, wanted to know a little bit about our past experiences of traveling in Mexico, and then thoroughly reviewed all of our documents to make sure that we did in fact qualify for economic solvency. After they approved us, they took our photos and fingerprints and then they put a sticker in our passport. Once you're approved, you have 180 days to return to Mexico where you complete the residency process. At the border or if you're flying in, you'll still get your tourist permit, the FMM, just like usual, but you need to make sure that they only allow it for 30 days and they mark Conje. This is super, super important for completing the process. If you don't have it marked Conje, you cannot complete the process at the immigration office. From there, you have 30 days to make an appointment and complete the process at an immigration office where you'll get your official residency card. We worked with a consultant to help us navigate this part of the process. With the language barrier, we didn't wanna screw any part of this process up. I mean, we already screwed it up when we were speaking with people in English in our home country. So we really didn't wanna prolong anything back here in Mexico. The consultant did all of the paperwork for us. They met us the day of our consulate appointment and they were super amazing at getting us an appointment to begin with. Some of the consulates will take appointments in advance and they fill up quickly. So you'll need to book way, way, way before you actually arrive in Mexico. Others only require same day appointments. Our consultant arrived at 3.30 in the morning to get us an appointment that same day. And we would have had to show up every single morning trying to get an appointment if we didn't have his help. If you're interested in using a service like we did, we will have their contact information down below, but just be aware that there are consultant services all across the country and they normally only work in certain cities. So for example, the one we used only offers services in Tijuana and Ensenada. We came to Ensenada to complete our residency because we were going to be traveling through Baja, so this was just convenient. Ensenada also offers offers same day appointments, meaning we could get our temporary residency card the same day that they did the interview and took our photo and did all of the things. Not every consulate will work like this, so you need to find out from a consultant or the immigration office for where you plan to apply or complete this part of the process. At our appointment in Ensenada, they asked us a few more questions, took our fingerprints and some more photos, and then they printed us a beautiful temporary resident card. This card is only good for one year. We'll need to come back to reapply next year. And then after four years, we no longer are temporary residents. Our status becomes permanent. With the consultant service fees and immigration fees, it costs us around $700 per person to gain temporary residency. So as you can see, this is quite an investment. This is not something that a general tourist who just wants to stay in Mexico a little bit longer should be using. It's really for people who want to live here and establish themselves in Mexico. A lot of people, just use the tourist visas to live in Mexico, but that's really not legal. You should be applying for temporary residency and starting that process before you come to live in the country. But we are so excited to finally have our residency. It feels unreal that we actually have our ID cards in hands after so many attempts and three years. I just can't believe our vision or our dream is finally coming to reality. Unfortunately, since we entered Baja so late this year, if you don't know why, make sure to check this video out. We explain all of the mishaps that kept us from entering. We don't really have time to explore Ensenada as much as we would like. We are staying at a beautiful RV park right on the water. It has full hookups and we have epic, epic views. It's also next door to Aguamala, which is one of the local breweries here. Ensenada is known for their breweries. They had fantastic food and great beers. Highly, highly recommend their baked oysters and their ceviche negro. Wow, it was incredible. We hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions about residency, make sure to leave them below. And this is your friendly reminder, subscribe if you haven't already. We have so many more amazing adventures coming for you in Mexico. Hasta pronto. There are several. There are several. Uh, no, no snacks. A snack? Oh, a beer. A beer, bro. There's man and his beers. Tecate, tecate, dos equis. Okay, done. He's not done. Hasta la pasta, señor. <laughs> if you have any, uh, I'm just gonna end it there. Okay, bye. <laughs>